Hi, I'm Peter Harrop, Chairman of ID TechX. I'm coming around our big show here in California, particularly interested at this point in looking at structural electronics. Components in a box are so yesterday, and we're moving to structural electronics where we have one single piece of material and it can replace rather a lot of other pieces of material. And the ultimate magicians in this is a company in Finland called Tactotech. If you want to see something really beautiful, just watch this. And I have the privilege of talking to David Rice. David, hello. Hello, Peter. It's great and to see you again. I'd like you to explain some of the things that you're doing and your virtuosity. It's uh, amazing. To, uh, it's the only place I know to uh, talk about structural electronics, and you say, do you want it in elm or oak <laughs> <laughs> or walnut? Uh, but anyway, uh, do go ahead, and uh, you can explain it better than I, and I'll ask some questions later. Wonderful. Peter, as you know, our structural electronics integrate printed circuitry, electronic components into 3D injection molded parts. Those parts can have elegant plastic finishes like IML processes or natural finishes such as the wood that you see on the door trim below. In mold labeling, thank you. Uh, we have integrated the printed circuitry and the components into a three-dimensional formed part. As you can see here, we have touch controls, we have wiring, and we have LEDs that are all molded into the final plastic structure. So you can pop in chips, whether they're LEDs or integrated circuits or whatever. Yes, you can. So clearly, we start with the simpler electronics, such as illumination, and then we advance to more complex multi uh, MCUs and other processors. That means the ink is going to have to stretch, surely, because you're being quite severe with it in the process. I mean, once it's in the product, like a car, it's not moving anymore, but this has to be stretchable, doesn't it? You know, that's, that's a key of our manufacturing process. To make this scalable, we are screen printing the circuitry when this film is two-dimensional. We're also surface mounting the electronic components when it's two-dimensional, so you can use standard pick-and-place and dispensing equipment. Then we 3D form that populated film to turn it effectively into a low-density printed circuit board that is fully encapsulated within standard injection molded plastics like polycarbonate, ABS, and PMMA. So you have to go for best-in-class partnerships. Absolutely, and we work very closely with the entire stack of vendors that contribute to these components, uh, from the film providers uh, to the conductive ink providers. Uh, there's dielectric materials to insulate between multiple layers of inks, and we work closely with the component manufacturers to make sure that the, these LEDs in this case can withstand the pressures and temperatures of the injection molding process and perform to full function. So we seem to have some wood reinvented here. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So this started off as just a beautiful cosmetic wood part from an existing vehicle. And the design challenge for us given to us by the OEM was to add illumination and capacitive touch controls into this beautiful decorative piece. And so we've managed to accomplish that in the same thickness and with the same elegance of design as in the standard cosmetic wood part. So what's it, what's it do in benefits in the eyes of the car company? In the benefits of the car company, if we look at this example of an overhead control panel, a typical overhead control panel has 60 or more parts that go into it and is 45 millimeters thick. As you can see from this part, it's a single piece and it's just over 3 millimeters thick. It's elegantly shaped to guide human interaction and has functionality including dome lighting, uh, a slider for opening and closing sunroof, lighting controls, an SOS button, and other antennas can easily be added to the structure for Bluetooth and for Wi-Fi. 
you have an antenna near the surface, it's going to work better. That's right. We both have a large surface area in which to print an antenna. That antenna is printed. It's not a, a separate piece. Printed just like our electronics are printed. Although we do use higher conductivity inks to optimize antenna performance. So I, I would guess that that must surely be at least 10 times as reliable. There's nothing to go wrong. There are no rocker switches. There's no plug-in bulbs. There's no uh, pieces. And so as you say, you're enormously reducing those parts. Uh, is there a price to pay in terms of it doesn't work at very high temperature or low temperature? Or? We've had parts that have gone through full automotive interior certification, uh, and that includes thermal uh, tests, minus 40, plus 85, uh, thermal cycling, as well as thermal shock tests. So we have been able to prove that these material stacks do meet those very demanding requirements. And indeed, with some aspects, it's, it sounds to me as if it's actually better, because I could run a hose over that, I can't do that with a plug-in bulb. Oh, that's, that's very true. Once these electronics are through our process of encapsulating them inside of the plastics, they are immune to vibration, they're very impact resistant, uh, there's no way for moisture or debris to penetrate the part. So from that perspective, they're in a very sealed environment and stable over time. So your focus is automotive by the look of these parts, although show some other parts. Are they automotive? Well, we have some of our more general demonstrators, such as this one, that, in that include touch controls. You like a volume control? Volume control or... Uh, a temperature control for and a thermostat. Uh, you know, yeah. a lot of what our technology yeah. is used for is human machine interface, which yeah. is touch functionality, illumination, and uh, connectivity through wireless technologies. And, and there's no, uh, and you're confident about. Uh, wave to someone it doesn't make the car accelerate or something. Absolutely. So, you know, there are ways to design the human interaction such that either by using multi-touch or by using other techniques so that users both can easily find those controls without diverting their visual attention and they can also uh, get confirmation just by the feel that you add to the product. So your um, intellectual property, um, screen printing is a thousand years old, you're doing it cleverly because you've got very special inks, uh, but um, there are issues of um, simulation and design software, I would have thought. Well, thank you for bringing that up. So those very special inks are the, the property of our material suppliers, DuPont, Sun Chemical, Henkel, and others. Uh, and we've worked very closely with them to make sure that their formulations deliver the properties that we need to make these very sophisticated parts. Now, design is a big challenge because we have new design freedom and, and new design rules to um, accommodate these different material stacks. And today, that knowledge base is within Tactotech. But we've partnered with the SO Systems for uh, computer-aided design and uh, Altium and Cadence for computer-aided engineering to integrate those design rules into their CAD and CAE products so any engineer using those, those design solutions will be able to create a Tactotech part. Clearly we're not talking about uh, just certain forms of plastic, certain forms of wood. We have here a beautiful piece of plastic work by the look of it. Uh, and this is also interior trim. So um, it seems to me that you at Tactotech have positioned yourself to um, be in a medium-sized things which tend to happen on the inside of a vehicle, tend to be happen on the inside of a car, uh, but, uh, but this can um, be done by what you call in-mold structural ele in electronics. It, it can move to rather larger sizes. It can move to rather larger sizes. And, you know, we are, uh, our specialty is developing the intellectual property base and the knowledge to successfully make these types of parts. 
and we are licensing this technology to partners for most of the mass production. So we're focusing on, on a medium-sized part, but our partners have equipment that's fully capable of making much larger parts. How many meters, roughly? Do not know. No, no. But it, it's likely that this is likely to appear in right. aircraft, it's likely to appear in buses, trains, trucks. Well, I would certainly expect it to evolve into aircraft and other, other use cases where things that are very durable and very lightweight, as well as offering electronic functionality, are valuable. Okay. Uh, typically, we are shaving uh, 70 to 75 percent of the mass off of a part, and we are reducing the depth of that part with the electronics to two to three millimeters instead of tens of millimeters. So those are great benefits for the interior of any type of vehicle, but other benefits accrue to home appliances, to countertop appliances, and even wearable technology. Ah, this is something So small. Suunto has integrated printed electronics into their MoveSense connection bridge. MoveSense is an activity monitor that, and it plugs directly into this connection bridge. And the chip that is in this piece that we have in molded tells the activity monitor where that chip is located. So if it is on the arm of a running jacket, it now knows that I am running and I'm on an arm. And so the data fidelity and the analytics that can be put against that are much more sophisticated than if, than if the activity monitor does not know where the sensor is located. So if I then go cycling, I can have one of these sensors in my shoe, and I can plug the activity monitor into the shoe, and now I'm tracking cycling, uh, which is something that doesn't work as well with a lot of activity monitors. They've even prototyped putting these connectors into dog collars so you can track whether your pet is getting enough exercise oh, during sorry, the day. That's what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, asking about this, there is a wonderful roadmap here. We've been uh, thinking about this because um, some things that are presumed to be impossible are coming possible. For example, Hanergy is bringing out, and it's demonstrated already, a whole range of cars, SUVs, everything that have the bodywork that is uh, gallium arsenide um, solar, one kilowatt per kilogram, so it doesn't affect the weight virtually at all. That's the outside of the body. That's not tack to tech, so to speak, but come back to here. And it's very interesting that Hanergy, because their solar layer is so efficient, they say it works on the dashboard to give you interior lighting, etc. So there's a source of power. It's not supposed to be, it was not taught that way normally. Normally you'd never put solar panels inside a vehicle behind the glass. They wouldn't work. But this is so efficient, it does work. And so um, I'm feeding you here a bit with uh, feeding the witness. But I would have thought that this totally compatible with this is you could have a semi-transparent layer that's photovoltaics with this high efficiency photovoltaics you could have another layer somewhere in there that's a supercapacitor that doesn't swell and shrink and stores electricity so am i right to enthuse that there is a whole road map of virtuosity here that you can add you can do far more than the wonderful variety of things you're already doing so yes, Peter, as, as you've identified, most of these use cases are interior and HMI use cases, human-machine interface, so control panels and lighting and communications. You know, the perimeter of a vehicle is now full of communications and sensors, and we anticipate that that's only going to increase. Uh, and we do have exterior use cases in automotive that are under development with our partners as well. Uh, so that is a something that's coming very quickly. Wonderful. Well, I could ask you questions for the rest of my life. I'm really excited about this, but in deference to our viewers, I think we'll close it at that point. You can contact Tactotech directly. Of course, they're in the US, not just Finland. They're moving across the world. And as we learnt, they have best-in-class partners. They really do. So this is a company to watch in the years to come. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very David. much, Peter.